Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC and Core consists of 70 plus controls, all powered by our Kendo UI product. Kendo UI provides feature rich UIs rendered with HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript that work seamlessly on any screen size with responsive and adaptive rendering. You also get full control of the user experience with robust client side APIs. With UI for MVC and Core, you get more than that. You get server side rendering using Razor helpers and Tag helpers, which means you have full IntelliSense and Visual Studio scaffolding to boost productivity. So let's take a look at what's new. Today, I get to introduce the new project wizard for ASP.NET MVC. Getting a new project up and running with UI for ASP.NET MVC has never been easier. With the new project wizard, simply click File, New, Telerik ASP.NET MVC Application, and we'll do the rest. From the wizard, you can choose from C Sharp or VB, or ASP.NET MVC 4 or 5. In several quick start templates, like the grid and menu template, that start you off with the most popular widget, the Kendo UI grid. And we've included templates for mobile web projects, so you can use your existing MVC skills to build touch-first mobile apps. Today I get to share with you the new dialog widget using Kendo UI for jQuery. The new dialog comes packed with features like accessibility, animations, and complete customization of dialog actions. And remember, the dialog widget isn't just new for Kendo UI, but all other UI products that are powered by Kendo UI, such as UI for ASP.NET MVC and UI for ASP.NET Core. The dialog widget is similar to the window widget with some additional features. With the dialog widget, we're able to control the title and define multiple action buttons. The content can be filled with any HTML content or contain any other HTML inputs or Kendo widgets. And any dialog wouldn't be complete without an optional standard close button and modal capabilities. Next, I'd like to introduce the brand new media player control. The new media player control is able to display video from static files in HTML5 supported format or from stream sources like YouTube. It includes full screen mode, volume, and tracking controls. The media player is included in Kendo UI, UI for ASP.NET MVC, and UI for ASP.NET Core. Improvements have been made to simple widgets like the numeric text box, all the way through enhancements to our more complex widgets like the spreadsheet. The R3 release is full of new updates and features that will make your data entry applications better than ever. Clear buttons are now standard across most input fields, and drop-down, combo, and auto-complete widgets received major updates like no data and add new item templates. In addition, new header, footer, and item templates have been added giving you full control over how drop-downs, combos, and auto-complete boxes render. Let's jump over to Visual Studio running ASP.NET Core and see some of these new features in action. So I just want to remind everybody before we get started that these features aren't exclusive to UI for ASP.NET Core. Any UI suite powered by Kendo UI can take advantage. What is exclusive to UI for ASP.NET Core and UI for ASP.NET MVC is the rich IntelliSense you'll get in the HTML helpers. So let's take a look at the code. I'm starting with just a simple combo box, and I'm going to pull in a custom data source that has customer information like names and photos. Let's open this up in the browser and see how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop this down, and you can see I'm pulling in all of the names from that data source. But let's make this a little more custom. Let's add a nice footer in the combo box to show how many pieces of data are coming back from the server. So back into our code, let's go ahead and specify a footer template. So I'm going to come back to my HTML helper, and I'm just going to hit dot in here. And you can see the rich IntelliSense come up, and when I type in template, you can see all the templates that are available for this widget. Uh, one of those that we're going to use now is the footer template. So I'm going to paste some code into the footer template here. And what this is going to do is count the total number of elements that have come back on this instance of the data source. 
So let's refresh the browser and see how that looks. And you can see when I click on the combo box, now I've got a total of 91 items found. So we have a nice footer here telling the user how many items are in this list. So if you look at the items in the list, right now we just have customer names. What I'd really like to do is put a photo next to those names so the user can see who they're picking from the combo box. So let's go back into Visual Studio and add that. So I'm going to create a new line here and I could just easily type in template and specify the template for the items. I'm just going to go ahead and paste something that I've already created in here. And this is going to set a background image for the item as well as bring up the customer's company name and their contact name and just provide a little bit more data for the user that's using this application. So I've saved that. Let's go back and refresh again. And you'll see I have the names here and their company, but I don't have the picture yet because I just need to add a little bit of CSS style to make that uh, picture visible. So I'm going to go over and just copy and paste some CSS that I've predefined into the template here. So I'm going to paste this below. We'll go back and refresh one more time. And just with that little bit of CSS, you can see we now have our images that show up in the customer dropdown. So this looks really nice, but there's a little bit of context missing here for the user. Let's go up here into the header template and just specify that the left hand side is the photo and the right hand side is the user's information. So we'll just go back into the combo box widget and add that header that we need in our dropdown. And I've already added the styling for this, so we can just go back to our drop down box and refresh the page and you'll see we have a nice header there and it flows nicely when we scroll and stays at the top of the drop down list. So now if I were to come in here and type in my own name, you can see that it comes up with no data found. So let's customize this no data template just a little bit. So let's fully just explore all the templates that are available to us. So I'm going to go back into the code one more time here and just add yet another template. And this time I'm going to specify a no data template. And I'm going to say, sorry, no customers with the name. And then give it the instance text. So what that's going to do is whatever I'm typing in the combo box, it will come up in display in the no item template. So if I go type my last name in again, you can see it's mirroring that right here in the no items template. And you can see we've got a total of zero items found as well. So there you see how you can completely customize the combo box. And these features are available for autocomplete drop downs and many other uh, templated controls that are in the Kendo UI suite. With the Kendo UI for jQuery R3 release, the upload widget got new features to simplify the user experience. Custom drag and drop zones were added so you can completely customize your app's features however you see fit. And now you can set file type restrictions by simply listing which file extensions are allowed by the upload widget. Plus, file management has never been more intuitive. Users can easily see upload status and quickly remove unwanted files. So let's hop over to a quick demo at demos.telerik.com and see it in action. In my browser, I've opened up demos.telerik.com and I've navigated over to the custom drop zone demo. And I just want to show how this new drop zone works by taking some files out of my desktop here and just dropping them into this zone on the page. So let's start with the uh, Kendoka. Let's drop him in there and you can see that it's updating right here in real time. And before you can ask, yes, we can just go ahead and select multiple images and drop all of those in there. And you can see those are uploaded seamlessly without us having to do each one individual. So if we scroll down this page, we can actually see the code that makes this run. So we have a paragraph tag here with the class of drop image here text. 
And if we look at our declaration for the component, you'll see that we've just set the drop zone property with a selector for that element. And that's how you enable a custom drop zone for the upload control. So let's go look at some other demos. So I've navigated over to the validation demo on demos.telerk.com, and I just want to show how the new validation works with the upload component. So the first thing I'm going to do is over where it says upload PDF, I'm going to choose select files. And I'm just going to pull in one of these GIF files, and right away it says file type not allowed. So I know I can't upload GIF files here. I'm going to go ahead and click remove. And then let's try the upload image one. Let's do this again and do select files. And I'm just going to grab a couple files this time and hit open. And since graphic files are allowed here, it's going to upload successfully. And you can see I have the three files that I selected displayed here. So let's scroll down to the code real quick. And we can see that to allow these file extensions, we just need to set the validation property on the component. And here's the array of extensions that are allowed for that upload widget. So these are some simple but really effective ways that the upload control has been improved and things that you can enable in your application today with the R3 release.